Oh my god, it's these guys. I'm going to groan on behalf of scientists everywhere. Then you're going to hand over the artifact. Oh my heckin' Reddit science gods! By the science god! My husband Lee and I have spent years sourcing the most- Yay. Look at these. What are you doing? I'm killing people, idiot. Run. This is cyberpunk all over again. It's fucking cyberpunk all over again. Oh yeah, and the random gay dude is an essential NPC. Imagine my shock. Where are your friends? I've been asking my therapist the same question for years. But he hasn't given me an answer I like yet. We got oil rig city. Oh no! It, you really can't swim underwater. Look at this. Look at this. What is this? <laughs> oh my god. This is this might be the ugliest game that's come out in the past 10 years. I can't believe this. This is so I, I could probably just stare at these randomly generated NPCs for hours. You know it had to be done. Oh god. Oh god, it's glitching again. Make it stop. What the, the fuck is it? The hell with that. I have a better plan. We use this opportunity to take out Delgado and at the same time make some serious credits for ourselves. Yeah, and he's an essential NPC. He just tried to betray our leader and I have to let him live. What? This game sucks, dude. You better get your own fleet. So I'm coming after you. This game is so fucking bad. He just said, I'm going to come kill you. I'm going to kill you. And in the pirate base, which he's not even a pirate anymore, by the way, I shoot him and they're hostile. It makes the other people hostile. That makes no fucking sense. This is the hey, dog shit video game. Hey, I want to talk to you right now. I have masks breathing down my neck. They're ready to shut down this entire operation. You open fire on SY920 and kill people. Just who the hell do you think you are? You're under arrest. Lieutenant Toth will escort you to the brig immediately. And I expect you to go peacefully. Do you understand? Time to die. Oh, I can't fucking... Let's talk about this for a second. Do they want to arrest me? I get the option to attack, and I still can't fucking kill the captain? This game is fucking dog shit, period. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. I told you so. Man, that feels good to say. I told all of you guys exactly what this game would be. That it would be Fallout 4 combined with No Man's Sky. And lo and behold, what is it? It's exactly that. But worse. I've talked about this a couple times in the past. But Fallout 4 was the biggest gaming disappointment to me of all time back when it came out. I was hyped through the moon when it was revealed during E3 2015. I actually grew up loving Fallout 3, despite its many flaws that I've come to realize later on. And when Fallout 4 finally came out, it turned out to be an incredibly shallow RPG with terrible writing, barely any side quests to speak of, and only a handful of even vaguely memorable characters. Not to mention the vast majority of exploration felt completely pointless with the removal of the weapon durability mechanic. The only reason to loot stuff was to grab random trash off the floor that you could use to modify your weapons and build up your settlements. Which I hated both of those systems, they really added nothing of value to the game. 
And so fast forward eight years later and Starfield is just more of the same shit, but even more bland. At the very least, the Fallout universe is pretty interesting. It's actually one of my favorite sci-fi universes I've ever seen. It combines a lot of cool retro sci-fi concepts in a post-apocalyptic wasteland and giant mutated animals. Even the intelligent races are pretty interesting. You got smart zombies, giant mutant green ubermensch robots, and as of Fallout 4, androids that look nearly identical to humans. And of course, Starfield has none of this. I'm just gonna say it right up front. There's no intelligent aliens in this game. And I already know some of you are gonna say, well, we already knew that before the game came out. Well, a bunch of people didn't know that. I did know that, and I had no hype for this game, so despite how utterly mediocre it is in almost every facet, I was not, in fact, disappointed by this game. I knew better than to have expectations after Fallout 4. And unlike Fallout 76, Bethesda can't hide behind this being some kind of B studio. No, it's their main studio that made Starfield. Supposedly, Todd Howard's magnum opus is without exaggeration one of the most boring games I've ever played in my life. Now, I know I'm starting to repeat myself with this, but no joke, ever since God of War Ragnarok's release, I swear AAA games are just getting more and more boring. But unlike cinematic games like God of War and Final Fantasy 16, this is boring for a completely different reason. The actual gameplay itself is dull and repetitive and utterly pointless. And the quest design is about as basic as it possibly gets. Every single one involves following an objective marker and either activating a thing, talking to a person, or killing some people. Every single one without exception. Even the world interactivity has been nerfed into the ground. Nearly every single named NPC in the entire game is essential, meaning you can't kill them. And this is especially frustrating because many of the NPCs are assholes to you. Remember a little lamplight back in the day? Now imagine that times 10. Nearly all of the dialogue is poorly written, reddit quirky tier garbage. Some of the cringiest shit you'll ever see. And to torture you even further, these characters in these conversations talk as slowly as humanly possible and use twice as many dialogue lines as any normal human being would in a conversation to explain something. I swear to god, they're torturing people like me on purpose. And you might be asking yourself, well, is it at the very least a good space exploration sim? Fuck no. It's a bunch of giant randomly generated massive wastelands that all look the same with three to six points of interest being placed in random locations and it's always the same shit. Whether it's a fucking bandit camp, some geographical instance, a cave which looks exactly the same as every other fucking cave or a settlement with a handful of randomly generated NPCs with randomly generated stores. And to make matters even worse, there aren't even fucking vehicles in this game. So you have to walk vast, empty landscapes for minutes at a time before you see some of this crap. And don't even try to tell me the creation engine can't do vehicles. One fucking autist in Fallout the Frontier somehow got vehicles to work in New Vegas. In a game that's over a decade old. So fuck off with that shit. It's pure laziness. You can't even land on a planet by flying to it. You have to open your map and select a point on a planet to land. Oh, and of course the loading screens. There's a thousand fucking loading screens. It's a loading screen simulator. I have a pretty fast SSD, so I didn't exactly have to wait long, but just the fact that it's way more efficient to complete an objective, pull up your missions, press R, which shows you exactly where the next objective point is, then hold X, and you just fast travel to the next planet. You don't even need to get on your ship 90% of the fucking time. Somehow, Bethesda has managed to make the most lazy, the most slop-filled, the most brain-dead, triple-vaxxed video game ever made. And there were people shilling this shit, saying it's some kind of phenomenal achievement with Giga Chad faces on the thumbnail. What a fucking joke. 
This game represents everything wrong with the video game industry. I'm serious. People are going to say, well, there's no microtransactions. Oh, just give it time. I'm sure they'll be there. I already had to pay 30 extra dollars to play this early since Bethesda wouldn't give me a code because, oh, what do you know? I'm a reviewer who's negative, obviously, so why would they give me a key? This entire game is mediocrity personified. Even the elements that are vaguely enjoyable are ruined by the sheer repetition. All of the high review scores, even from YouTubers, have just confirmed to me that everyone's sold out. Nobody's honest about video games anymore. Why not just take a paycheck from Bethesda? Your audience is too stupid to notice or care if you sell them a bad product. I'm one of the only honest people left on this platform. Me and Worth a Buy, 21 Kiloton, and probably one or two others, but I've seen a few people who I thought were honest actually praise this piece of shit. So yeah, even though I basically just covered every major gameplay issue with the game, believe it or not, there's a lot more to cover here. So, without further ado, here's Starfield's Slop of the Year. First things first, let's talk about the performance issues, because if you're playing this on PC, you're not going to have a great time. Now me, I had a very unique issue that seems to be fairly rare. So I'm not going to pretend this is going to be the majority of people's experiences, but I specifically got fucked over by this game, or at least my PC did, because it blue screened more than five times while I was streaming this. Oh, and don't worry, I checked everything you could possibly think of. My GPU wasn't overheating, neither was my CPU, I was only getting about 50% memory usage, and I did a RAM diagnostic, so I don't even know if it's a memory leak issue either, it could be, but these blue screens were happening at random intervals. It could have been 15 minutes, it could have been five hours of streaming, either way, it would crash my entire computer. Which is obviously a problem, it made me freak the fuck out and think I need to replace some parts or get them fixed or something, but no, it's only Starfield, doesn't happen with any other game, and guess what fixed the problem? Just lowering the graphics settings to low. And even with a Ryzen 9 5900X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, an RTX 3080, even on low settings at 1440p, still got a shit ton of stuttering and FPS drops all over the place. The game runs like shit. I can't believe there are some people saying this is well optimized. That's just a straight up lie. I'll tell you what it was optimized for, Xbox, that's it. And even then it only runs at 30 frames on console. And while I don't usually talk about specific PC settings, because I don't really care all that much in the grand scheme of things, it is very notable that there's no FOV slider. What a basic feature that is missing, and there was a day one mod to adjust FOV so the devs could have easily put it in. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the gameplay. What are you going to be doing in Starfield? Well, pretty much exactly the same thing you did in Fallout 4, except in space. You go around, you kill humans with very similar gunplay to Fallout 4, with quite a few reused sound effects and animations, most notably being the grenade priming sound effect. I mean, you probably heard that a thousand times when playing Fallout 4, so you'll recognize that one immediately. And look, I'm not going to shit on the gunplay too hard. I think Fallout 4's was pretty decent, and this is actually slightly better than Fallout 4's, but notably, the gun sound effects are fucking terrible. A lot of them are way too muted. Not to mention the biggest flaw of Bethesda's game design is still here, that being bullet sponge enemies. And I feel like there's more in this game than there ever were in their previous games. You might remember the legendary enemies from Fallout 4. They're the ones who dropped the special weapons and armor that always had a special ability attached to them. When you took them down to half health, the health would fill back up, right? Well, Bethesda made it even worse by making the new strong enemies have multiple health bars. And when you're fighting an alien animal, of which there's a bunch of different species, but they basically all act exactly the same, the legendary enemies of that type can take hundreds of rounds of ammo, specifically the new Space Death Claw, the Terror Morphs, are insane bullet sponges. I mean, we're talking a straight minute of shooting them and they still don't fucking die. 
This is not fun. It takes no skill. It just wastes your resources. And it's not like I wasn't putting perks into damage. I put the majority of my perks into damage. I was almost min-maxing damage because I didn't really care about much else because you do so much shooting in this game. For shooting that is incredibly repetitive and not really engaging. And if you're one of those gun nerd people, this game is going to set you off. A lot of these NASA punk style weapons look dumb as hell, or are clear reskins of real world guns like the Space P90. And for those of you who remember a minor controversy from last year, where the double barrel space shotgun ejected not rifle casings, but the entire rifle round with the bullets still in it. And note how I said rifle, not shotgun. And so you might be wondering, did Bethesda fix this issue at least? Well, technically, yes, they did, in the funniest way imaginable. Instead of doing what mods for both Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 have done and just made a custom animation for each gun, Bethesda has now made the majority of sci-fi weapons in the game fire caseless ammunition. And you might think, well, I guess that kind of makes sense because the G11 was an experimental German gun that fired caseless ammunition. Okay, sure, but what the hell is a caseless shotgun shell? Is it just a wad, some pellets, and you jam in the gunpowder like a musket? I mean, what does that even look like? It's not like they show us what a caseless shotgun shell looks like in the game. So the shotgun just ejects nothing. It looks fucking stupid. Now, believe it or not, this is not just a Fallout 4 clone. This is also a Skyrim clone, as you get space magic powers over the course of the story. And it turns out these magic powers are just shouts from Skyrim. I'm not joking. There's even a Fus Roda one, even though it's complete crap. These people look suitably dysgenic, don't you think? That's it? In fact, most of the ones I picked up while I was playing were trash, with the exception of the very first one, which is an anti-gravity lift spell that you've seen in Bioshock-like games before. Obviously pretty useful, even though it looks incredibly stupid. And minor spoiler here, this game has New Game Plus, and in my New Game Plus run, I picked up one that can slow down time, which was extremely good, and one that could create a duplicate of myself that can shoot. The thing is, all the other ones were so situational that I don't even know what the fuck the point is. Like, one shoots out a tiny fireball that does less than a single shot from your pistol. And another one is like a mini beam, and that was similarly weak, right? And I know, somebody's gonna write in the comments, Well, if you keep visiting temples, it upgrades your abilities, kind of like finding the other words to a shout. Yeah, but it's completely random! If you're playing Skyrim, you can just use the internet to find all three words to the shout you need. In this, you just gotta keep visiting temples and hope you get lucky. What the hell is the point of magic powers if 80% of the time it's better to just shoot a guy? So yeah, I'm sure people are going to argue this is actually a really cool thing, but to me, again, it just shows how fucking derivative this is and how Bethesda has no original ideas left that they're just recycling old mechanical concepts from their more popular games. Okay, what about loot and exploration? Well, loot has been sort of improved. I'd say it's still mostly the same as Fallout 4. You're gonna pick up a shit ton of random garbage for crafting, and actually they've expanded crafting even more than Fallout 4, so there's twice as much garbage that you might have to pick up, and if you're not paying attention, you won't even know what to pick up, so you're gonna be constantly over-encumbered. Oh yeah, they reduced the encumbrance limits in this game compared to older Fallout games. It's much closer to Fallout 76 than it is to, say, Fallout 3 or New Vegas. I was constantly over-encumbered, even with a companion following me. Now you can sort of alleviate this by expanding your ship's cargo, or building a base somewhere to constantly fast travel to, but one, I fucking hate the settlement system, I don't fucking care, and spoilers, there's no settlement section in this video, cause I didn't want to do it. As for the ship, well, I can only blame myself. Much later on, I did expand my cargo significantly. But still, I gotta say, the encumbrance limits are way too annoying. You could easily fill up your entire inventory in just one dungeon if you're raiding every chest. 
One of the weirder downgrades from previous Bethesda games is that you can no longer loot all of the clothing from your enemies. And I don't just mean the apparel to strip them down naked. I mean, the armor and the helmet don't always drop. In fact, most of the time they don't. Now, if it's rare or better loot, you'll be able to take it off of them. And in certain situations, you can loot the apparel layer, but you can never strip an enemy down to their underwear. And can you think of one reason why that might be the case? Well, like many, many modern games, about half of the enemies in this game are women. And it is not very politically correct to strip a woman down to her underwear, even though this is something you could do in like every previous Bethesda game. And while this isn't loot related on the same line of thinking, there's no gore in this game either, something that has been a feature since Fallout 3, and this is very clearly a clone of Fallout 4, I don't care what anybody else says. So they actively removed a feature from previous games, even though this game is rated M, and gore would no doubt make the shooting more fun. And again, I have to make the argument, it's because leftists don't want you brutally dismembering women. At least I would have to believe that's the case. And given the many other woke elements of this game that we'll get into later in this review, I have to believe this is the reason. Why else would they remove gore if it's still rated M? It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, back to loot. Now, the improved part of the loot, I'd say, is the new version of the legendary weapons. Instead of just having special guns that have one trait, Starfield now just copied off of a bunch of other loot games, and you have blue, purple, and gold rarity weapons, with each having one more perk than the last. And the actual perks seem a little bit more useful than Fallout 4's, at least based on what I remember. So actually, the gun and armor loot system is completely fine. I don't have a problem with it. It certainly could be more creative, but it was the least of my issues with this game, really. Oh yeah, and I guess this is kind of vaguely gameplay related, but you can't even go underwater in this game. I found out about that in a leak about a week before release. And I remember reading it, and I'm like, there's no way that's real, right? Swimming underwater has been in every other Bethesda game. There's no way they would cut that out. Well, Neon is a city built on an oil rig. I jumped straight off the edge and landed and didn't sink into the water at all. There was no splash animation. It looked jank as fuck. <laughs> My god, this game sucks, dude. It's so bad, man. I can't believe there's people making excuses for this shit. Now, what about space travel and exploration? Well, like I said in the beginning, there is no real space exploration. Space itself might as well be a loading screen. It's just a randomly generated empty space that might have enemy ships in it, and there's a bunch of giant PNGs of other planets. You can't even fly to said PNGs and land on them, no, what you actually have to do is, once you're in the general vicinity of a planet after you've fast-traveled to that star system, you have to open your map and then select a point on the planet. And once you've selected a random point on the planet, the game procedurally generates a giant empty wasteland, and three to six points of interest are generated on that wasteland. And while I haven't spent a whole lot of time exploring the different types of points of interest, as far as I can tell, it's really just a random dungeon, a random settlement with nameless NPCs, a geographical landmark that might have one or two chests at it or some kind of loot equivalent, but otherwise is pointless, or a small cave that looks exactly the same as every other small cave. And like I said in the intro, you're going to be walking, yes, walking, for several minutes in between these points of interest because Bethesda was too incompetent to put vehicles in the game. Oh, and if for some reason you're particularly fond of one of these giant hunks of rock, you can build a settlement on top of them. And like I said, I'm not going to go into that any further. Oh, and in case I didn't make this clear, no, you cannot walk from one end of the planet to the other. These randomly generated wastelands are a giant square, a tile as it's been described, and you can just walk to the edge of the tile and it tells you the boundary has been reached. 
Now I've heard a lot of conflicting information as to whether or not the various generated tiles on each planet are actually connected and so theoretically if you walked across all the tiles you would be walking all the way across the planet but frankly I don't fucking care it still sucks now I don't know about you but when I thought of exploring the galaxy and all of these unique star systems and checking out what the universe has to offer my idea of exploration was not No Man's Sky plus random Fallout 4 dungeons. That might have just been me. I don't know, maybe that's exactly what you wanted. But me, I wanted something that actually felt handcrafted. And like I told you so a year ago, I knew that would be impossible with 1,000 planets. And oh, what do you know, I was right. As I was right for almost all of my predictions for this game, and still, I got a massive amount of dislikes. When will you people learn? So yeah, that's it for space exploration. You thought I was joking? No, that's pretty much it, dude. You click on one of these solar systems, click on a random planet, pick a random location, and explore randomly generated locations. Well, what about space combat? Is that all right at least? Yeah, I, I guess it's okay. I'm not gonna say it's terrible. It was a little dull. I kind of like the idea of having a set amount of power and having to distribute that across various systems. That's a good idea. I wish it was slightly less annoying to actually divert the power across those systems, but it was a good concept. I think the actual ship combat feels pretty decent, though. It's definitely easier to use in third person than first person at the cost of it being less immersive. To go over the combat very simply, you have three guns attached to your ship, one for depleting shields, one for damaging the hull, and the third one is usually a bunch of missiles, which is decent at hurting both health bars. And you just fly behind the enemy ship and shoot them. If you put skill points into targeting systems, you can target specific parts of the ship, like disabling their engine. But honestly, I did not fuck around with that too much, because like I told you, I was using most of my skill points to up my damage since all the enemies were bullet sponges. And I'm sure some of you are curious about shipbuilding, so I'll talk about it briefly here. I didn't experiment too much with this because, admittedly, the tutorial wasn't all that great, but essentially you need a certain amount of essential parts to make your ship function, like an engine, and I don't really need to explain the rest, you get the point. But every other part is optional, and you can just build it however you see fit, kind of like a gummy ship from Kingdom Hearts. And how you build your ship actually does affect how it flies. As a meme, I decided to just stack a bunch of habs on top of each other because I wanted a weapon bench, a research station, an infirmary, and captain's quarters all the way at the top. So I just stacked them on top of each other, making this giant, like, camel hump ugly piece of shit. And it flew like a piece of shit too, which was kind of cool. I liked that. Unfortunately, you can only have three guns on your ship, which is a disappointing limitation. But they did try to make this as convenient as possible, letting you just swap out the guns or the shields or the generator without actually moving the part itself. So if you are lazy like me, it does accommodate you that way as well. I really have no complaints at all about the ship builder. I'm sure somebody could come up with some, but that just was not my concern personally. And let's just transition to the RPG mechanics. First, we'll talk about character creation, which honestly, I probably should have started this video with. The character creator is fine. It's actually a little bit of a step down from Fallout 4's, believe it or not. Fallout 4 actually let you mold individual parts of the face to make pretty much anybody you wanted. I was actually decently impressed with what people were able to create with it. Instead, this is back to the Skyrim way of doing it with a shit ton of sliders for various parts of the face. The only thing I was specifically disappointed by is the lack of option for the eyes. For some reason, every character in this game has female looking eyes, prey eyes as people might call it. There's no way to adjust Canthal tilt or have a little bit of squint to the eyes or maybe there's a way to have your brow ridge be prominently above it, but I didn't really fuck around with it enough to see for certain, but the rest of the character customization options were fairly extensive. 
I would have liked the body types to maybe look a little bit more extreme as it stands. All the muscular body types sort of have the power lifter look where they have a very wide waist. I would have liked to have more of a V taper look, but the more you go toward the skinny end, the less muscular the character looks. So there wasn't really a happy medium in between muscularity and skinniness that I could see. As for the whole pronouns debacle, I'm sure some of you want me to weigh in on the whole heel versus babyface spurg out thing. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Because that's all we fucking know! Because we're boring! We're so fucking boring! The thing is, if you know me, you already know I support what he said in principle. I certainly wouldn't have overreacted that much over something that's basically been in every modern game with a character creator over the last few years. Not saying it's okay, it's not. I think it's propaganda, but I'm definitely used to it by now, which is arguably part of the problem. But I do find it funny that a member of the Phantom Menace, a group that has effectively blacklisted me and one of their more popular members, made a four-hour hit piece on me that he showed to a few of his buddies and talked shit about me for 11 hours straight. Now one of his personal friends that he shares multiple podcasts with is under hot water with basically all the vaguely center-left game reviewers shitting all over him for overreacting to... Something that has unfortunately been normalized in the cultural zeitgeist. I guess I'm just getting a little bit of schadenfreude from this whole thing, because for once, I'm not the guy under hot water for complaining about all of the left-wing propaganda in modern video games. And it's a group that doesn't even like me that is supposedly against the message, despite several of their members coming out in favor of things that absolutely are being pushed by the message, like episode 3 of The Last of Us TV show. Now have to deal with one of their members doing a synthetic man tier spurg out. We'll just call it that. I do have some self-awareness, guys. So yes, the character creator has pronouns. It even lets you pick a female walk cycle if you have a male body type. So basically just a flamboyant gay dude, right? So yeah, I mean, it's not really a shock from a lowest common denominator pro-globo homo game such as this. Trust me, the wokeness goes much, much further than pronouns in this game. The racial and gender demographics of this game are absolutely fucking insane if you even start to pay even a little bit of attention. But we'll get back to that later. Moving on. Now one thing people were talking about with the character creator that they liked is the return of character backgrounds and traits. Character background was kind of interesting. It gives you some extra dialogue options. Not a whole lot. At least Gangster doesn't have a whole lot. Especially if I were to compare this to Baldur's Gate 3, which, you know, came out not that long ago, which had like 10 times the flavor text this game has, despite being made by a much smaller studio. And the other thing the background does is gives you a point in three skills, which really doesn't make a massive difference, but if you're big on min-maxing, then I guess you'll like that. As for traits, I honestly don't even remember most of them. The two that stood out the most to me is the adoring fan, or returning character from Oblivion. If you pick this trait, he finds you near the beginning and joins your crew. And he's actually one of the few charming, memorable characters in this game. And of course, he comes from a completely different game, because Bethesda has run out of good ideas. Another trait I liked was Kids Stuff, which gives you two parents that you can seek out pretty early on in the game, and they'll show up at a few points later on and have some dialogue, and they're written like two kind of generic, supportive, middle-aged parents, and I like that. Yeah, it's definitely a trope, but it's a trope done well. There's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, this game could have used more generic character and story tropes because as it stands, almost every character is forgettable and I couldn't tell you a single thing about their personality or motivations. And honestly, I forgot all the other traits. I really did, and I'm not even going to look again because I don't care. The point is, they don't seem to make that much of a difference. People like traits because they usually come with a high cost, but then give you some kind of unique benefit. They're used for roleplay reasons, but this game has a serious issue with the roleplaying elements, especially it's tied into the main story itself. We'll get into that in the main story spoilers, but let me just tell you that the traits did not impress me in any way. Okay, now moving on to the skill trees. 
Well, I have one question for you. Have you played Fallout 4? If you have, you'll be familiar with this system already. Now, they tweaked a few things. Namely, they completely got rid of stats. There is no more special. Now you just pick one of these tier one perks and once you put enough perk points into tier one of a skill tree, you unlock the next tier. Each perk has four ranks and to select the next rank, you first have to complete a challenge, which is usually just engaging in said perk a number of times. Like if you're upgrading your pistol damage, you'll have to kill 20 enemies with a pistol and then 50 and then 100, you get the point. It's pretty much the same across all the various perks. And instead of the categories being divided by one of your stats, they're divided by the type of skill they are, like science or guns or tech. You get the point. And I think Worth a Buy pointed out the biggest problem with this system better than I ever could, so I'll just play a clip from his video. Stuff that you would normally expect to have that other games give you from the get-go, this game takes it off you. You don't have hardly anything that you can actually do in situations unless you put perks in. You can't even target components on an enemy ship unless you put a perk in. You can't pick locks unless you put a perk in. You can't stealth unless you put a f***ing perk in. This is perk wall. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Your character starts off with very few abilities. Obviously, you're going to favor the thing that lets you do something new over the thing that just increases damage or defense by 10%. No stats, no skills from 0 to 100. The only things that determine your build in this game are your background and traits you pick at the very beginning of character creation and your skills. That's it. Very little replayability here. I'm not even sure how they could further dumb it down from this other than just removing the ability to even pick skills. Okay, enough about gameplay. Let's finally get to the universe of Starfield. It's a whole new Bethesda IP, all new characters, new lore. That sounds kind of exciting, right? I mean, people really like the Elder Scrolls lore. And even though they didn't create the Fallout universe, and arguably they actually ruined several elements of it and didn't add anything of value, the Fallout universe is still very interesting on its own, and most people know it these days for being a Bethesda property. And of course, Todd Howard, we all love him for the memes, even though a lot of the lies are not in fact memes, they're genuine lies. He is a glorified marketing lead more than he is a game director at this point. Still, he tried to convince us this is his magnum opus, he is credited as the game director of Starfield, so... Is the story or the lore of this game at least interesting? Does it prove itself to be a valuable new IP to Bethesda? Well, you already know the answer. I fucking hate this game. Of course the story and the lore suck too. This is genuinely one of the most bland science fiction universes I've ever seen. It doesn't matter what the medium is across TV, film, books, video games. This has no creativity to it whatsoever. This actually is the aspect of the game that made me want to give the title creatively bankrupt to this. This game has very little cohesive direction, and even after spending over 30 hours playing the game at the time of recording this, I still have no good idea of how this world truly works. How did it come to this culture? What even is the culture? If anything, it just feels like the modern day if we got transported 300 years into the future. People talk like modern day people. Again, it just shows the lack of imagination that the creators of this game couldn't even imagine a world with different dialects, possibly a completely different language, different culture, different ethics. Of course you can't have different ethics because that might give people wrong think. Or if you are going to have people with questionable moral values, they are indisputably the bad guys and they're cartoonishly evil and have no real motivations. Honestly, I'd say even the visual aesthetic is just not consistent. While the city of New Atlantis and a lot of the hallways of the various space stations on these giant rocks barren of any life do look like the aesthetic they're going for which is a combination of like 70s nasa technology and the type of retro sci-fi you see in alien i think that's what they're going for anyway but starfield it never quite comes together i don't know it looks soulless to me i know this is purely subjective 
but I just don't really like the look of it, right? Now, like I said, it's not visually consistent. When you go to the city of Neon, it's just a straight up cyberpunk city on an oil rig. I mean, it looks like it was ripped straight out of Cyberpunk 2077. Another example is Aquila City. It's a Wild West town in space. That's it. You've already seen this concept done multiple times, probably most famously in anime. Now what about the story? Well, there's not a whole lot to tell here. The main story is actually very simple. Now that's probably not too much different from other Bethesda games now, thinking about it off the top of my head. But unlike previous games, there's not as much of a main plot hook, which some might argue is a good thing. At least it doesn't feel as railroaded as Fallout 3 or 4, where there obviously was an urgent time-sensitive quest, or at least you thought so. Obviously, they're not in reality. But finding your dad or finding your son seems like something you'd want to prioritize. Starfield doesn't have that. You're basically just finding a bunch of alien artifacts on various planets to complete something, right? I won't get into the major story spoilers just yet. Now to get to the parts of the game that I used to like the most about Bethesda games, that being the handcrafted part of the world, the immersion, the quest design, and the story of the major side quests. This won't come as a shock given the rest of this review, but I think Bethesda failed on pretty much every account here. Let's talk about the design of the cities first. There's three major cities in this game, New Atlantis, Neon, and Aquila City. You could probably also argue that the Little Mars Town, I actually forgot what it's even called, is also pretty important as you'll go there multiple times for a couple of the faction quests, but it's even smaller than the other three, so whatever, doesn't really matter. The point is, even though New Atlantis is supposed to be basically this shining beacon of space travel, the first giant city that mankind created after they journeyed into the stars. Functionally, it's actually fucking tiny. It's a giant amount of empty space. It's almost like a theme park, which I guess fits because that's how Bethesda used to design their games, basically like theme parks, with a bunch of unrelated highlight content created in between small empty spaces. I think Fallout 3 is actually the perfect example of their old style of world design. And I won't go into that now because that would take way too long, but New Atlantis is kind of like that except without the really cool memorable quests. And that counts for pretty much all of the cities. They look nice, but in terms of actual content, not only does it seem pretty light and the quests themselves seem kind of shitty, at least the ones I played were, but also it's hard to even find the content to the point where Bethesda had to have random roaming citizens talk about the quest just so that it would point you in the right direction of content. Because the city is so vast and so empty and a lot of the buildings just function as basic shops, finding side quests on your own would involve an insane amount of wasted time because there's a lot of named NPCs that have borderline zero function in this game. And speaking of NPCs, the first thing you'll notice if you're paying even the smallest amount of attention to this game is that there's something very wrong with the generic NPCs in Starfield. First of all, they're fucking hideous, dude. These are the ugliest generic NPCs I've ever seen in any video game. Not only is this the most cartoonishly diverse group of people, but they're very obviously dysgenic, and some of them are basically just like some kind of mystery mix of different phenotypes. There's even a generic aborigine character. What the actual fuck happened in 300 years? Were white people nearly exterminated? Seriously, go around and try and count how many white males you see. It's less than 1 in 20, I promise you. And I've seen projections that this game cost anywhere from 200 million to 400 million, and they could only afford to make about maybe 20 generic civilian NPCs? You're gonna be seeing the same exact faces and the same handful of clothes styles every 30 seconds. It's clear to me that you were never meant to actually look at any of the people walking around. This feels like something they slapped together in the last few months of development because they realized that the world felt really dead without more NPCs. Because once you turn up the crowd density to high, it's the same fucking 10 people walking around everywhere. This is just an embarrassment from a AAA game, seriously. 
Now let's get to the second point on the agenda, the named NPCs, the ones you actually talk to. Like I said in the intro, nearly all of them are flagged with essential. In fact, I believe they're all unkillable with the exception of ones that are killed specifically in a quest. Now for those of you who are incredibly boring and play video games like a fucking bot, maybe that won't matter to you. But to me, who likes the world interactivity in these games, in fact, one of the coolest aspects of Fallout New Vegas is that you could kill anybody and still complete the game. And yes, I realize that was developed by Obsidian, not Bethesda. It just goes to show you how much better Obsidian was back in the day. Not these days, though. Outer Worlds was uh, pretty bad as well. Though I'm shocked to say this, I think Outer Worlds might actually be better than Starfield. Crazy, I know. I actually hate Outer Worlds more than most people. But at the very least, in Outer Worlds, you could also kill pretty much any NPC. In Starfield, you can't do anything except gun down random ugly civilians. And you know what? That was fun the first few times because they disgusted me and they need to be wiped out from the gene pool. Are you really as human as I am? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that you're as human as I am. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Real human being. And a real hero! I'll kill you all! I'll kill you all! They took it away from me! I can't have anything! He'll never take me alive! I hate the Antichrist! I hate him! <laughs> yeah, they got me. This game has no grit or edge to it whatsoever. It is so bland and safe and generic and inoffensive. And of course, that extends to the NPCs themselves to get back to the named ones. You might notice a certain theme here, or several themes, to get into the wokeness factor I'm sure many of you want me to talk about. There's a whole lot of female scientists, female commanders or captains in the military, the president of the United Colonies is a woman. The leader of Constellation is a woman. The second in command of the Crimson Fleet, a bunch of space pirates, is a sassy black woman stereotype. Probably the most annoying character in the game, who of course you can't kill unless I'm assuming you join UC, but I wanted to be evil, so I got locked out of killing her. And man, like I said, the dialogue is horrific. I could just play you examples. I don't need to give you scenarios. There's no context that would make these lines good. A terramorph, then. A terramorph. On your first mission. Oh my god, I'm so cool. If I could be frank for a moment, holy shit. Where are your friends? I've been asking my therapist the same question for years. But he hasn't given me an answer I like yet. Here's an idea. Why don't you shout that louder so everyone at UC Security hears? Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC They did it twice! They you. did it twice! Let me make this crystal clear. You do what you can to stay in the fleet, but it's not a license to kill. That is where we draw the line. What do you think do they do? They kill people dead. daily. Remember, on the key, Credits are... That's everywhere. That's such bad writing. Credits are king everywhere. It's all money. Right, right. Yeah, we're doing this right now. Here for business? For pleasure. His behavior towards women is abominable. Oh no. Really to be of it. <laughs> Damn it, I don't want to kill him anymore then. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out. Okay, sure. Tell me all of your plans and I will turn you into local police, you dumb bitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting to that. <laughs> oh, uh, hi! Uh, hello! <laughs> You're the alien! Uh, the, uh, well, uh, the person that came from out there, in space, that we weren't expecting at all. And if you think it's just the characters, no, your dialogue options are horrible Reddit cringe shit too. I swear to God, sincerity is dead. You're only allowed to ever be sarcastic or snarky anymore. And it's not funny. It's not cool. It's fucking lame as hell. And it completely ruins my immersion when both you and all the NPCs of the world talk like it's 2023. It's like 2330 or some shit. Are you kidding me? 
and to get to the actual quests themselves, again, like I said in the intro, you're basically just following objectives, killing guys, activating a thing, or talking to a person. Now, I'm sure the midwits among you might say, well, simplified, pretty much any game is like that. Yeah, but here's the thing, this is an RPG. They're supposed to be about player choices. There's a difference between boiling down most video games to one of those three objectives and being forced to only do whichever objective the game tells you to do. Even when a quest gives you multiple solutions, they are spelled out clearly to the player, and most of the time you're given an objective marker for both of those options, and so that's not a choice. That's the illusion of choice. There's no moment, like in New Vegas, where you can come up with some kind of creative solution, or there's no objective marker at all, and you have to actually figure it out. No, it's just follow the quest marker, do the thing. Follow the quest marker, do the thing. And it's only made that much worse when the character dialogue is so bad and so cartoonishly long, dude. Probably about a third of the way into the game, maybe closer to halfway, I got so fucking sick of the talking, the constant monologuing from the unfunny, quirky Reddit NPCs that I started skipping the dialogue. And guess what? But that's the even fucked up skipping dialogue. You can only do it about once per second, whereas in most good games, you can skip at least twice that vest. And to talk about your player dialogue choices more in depth, Remember that complaint everyone had with Fallout 4, where basically every conversation, you only had four options. That being, yes, sarcastic yes, no, and ask one question. Well, for the most part, it's exactly the same in this game. Even though none of the lines are voice acted, the majority of them can pretty much be broken down into agree with character, joke answer, sometimes a second joke answer, or disagree with character. Sometimes you get follow-up questions, but the majority of the time you do not, and every time you do get questions, they're only relevant to the current conversation. And for those of you young Zoomers who have no idea what makes this different from previous games in the series, how conversations in Bethesda games used to work is that you would walk up to an NPC, talk to them, and you could ask them questions about the area, like gossip, or you could ask them a question related to the quest without being prompted in an already existing conversation. Sometimes you would just have dialogue options that don't have to do with anything. There's nothing like that in this game. I feel like every major RPG, even Baldur's Gate, which I probably praised more than I should have, only had dialogue options related to whatever you were currently doing. No longer do we have immersive RPGs where you're dropped in a world and you have to figure things out by talking to people and asking them questions. That just doesn't fucking exist anymore. NPCs only serve one function, and that function is the quest. Whatever quest it is, it's the quest, and they are not a character outside of the quest. Except maybe your companion NPCs, and speaking of companions, don't really like them either, to be honest. I couldn't really tell you almost anything about them. Sarah Morgan is the head of the Constellation, and she likes space stuff. Sam Coe has the voice of Adam Jensen from the Deus Ex games, and he has a mutt daughter. Again, more woke shit, evidently. And he's a space cowboy and part of a family that founded the cowboy town. He probably has a more memorable backstory than most of the other characters, at least I could say it off the top of my head. Andresia is a Russian chick from some cult that worships a great serpent god. And she had a pretty rough childhood, and the serpent people have slightly different ethics than ours. But she's still a good guy. Speaking of good guy, I don't think there's any evil companions. At least I didn't find one. I literally did the Crimson Fleet faction quest. They're the space pirates. And there was no evil companion there. What the fuck? This is yet another game with an underdeveloped, undermotivated, lacking any complexity, evil faction. You could boil it down to the Crimson Fleet wants the super secret pirate treasure that their original founder died trying to get. Yeah, that's it. It doesn't even involve, like, being actually evil and destroying the United Colonies, though obviously you get a big battle at the end where you defeat a ship 
And of course, guess what? Despite the fact that I joined the United Colonies in a different faction quest line, I had no problem siding with the Crimson Fleet afterward. They had no dialogue acknowledging that I was a hero that saved the galaxy from the Terror Morphs, which are space death claws with psychic powers. And the United Colonies people never acknowledged that I betrayed them and sided with the Space Pirates. This is yet another Bethesda game, just like Skyrim, where you can join every single faction. Which is kind of ironic, because this game has a New Game Plus feature, which you would think would incentivize multiple playthroughs. But if you could just do everything you want to do the first time around, what the fuck is the point of New Game Plus? And actually, let's talk about the United Colonies faction quest real quick. Because that was probably the worst written quest line in the entire game, at least out of the ones I played. So like I mentioned, it's about space death claws. Somewhere along the way, you meet Hadrian, which I'm pretty sure is a man's name. And it is a black female scientist who turns out is a clone of a black male general who turned out to be evil and killed a bunch of innocent people or whatever. I don't know, he seemed pretty base to me. But for some reason, when they cloned him, they made one of the clones female, which is not a fucking clone, by the way. Did Todd Howard go to the Kojima school of cloning? Neither one of them know what the fuck that word means. And so I've seen some people claiming this is supposed to be a trans character, but if she really was intended to be a trans woman, don't you think they would have spelled that out in one of the lines of dialogue? These people can't wait to tell you that they're trans and what their pronouns are. They would have spelled it out. It's just bad writing that happens to coincide with current identity politics issues. Either way, it doesn't really matter to me, it's cringe. And like I said, one of many, many female geniuses in this game. Oh yeah, there's a shit ton, guys. I'm serious. But like the saying goes, a character can only be as smart as their writer. And the writers of this questline we're not smart in the least, because as it turns out, the big plot twist is that where all of these terror morphs are coming from that are showing up on every human settlement after several decades, is that these little worm creatures called heat leeches that also just so happen to follow humans onto every planet are transforming into them. Oh man, what a fucking twist! That twist doesn't even work because they didn't tell the audience at any point that heat leeches follow humans on other planets, because if they did, everyone would guess the twist. So these genius characters are fucking idiots. And the other twist too, is that the black general guy who was supposedly executed, actually has been in custody of the UC this entire time, and somehow from a secure cell has organized even more terror morph attacks that have been killing a bunch of innocent people, because evil characters can only be cartoonishly evil. And for once, the game gives you a choice. You can either tell the truth and turn him in to the United Colonies cabinet or whatever they're supposed to be. Or you can lie and say it was this random guy that you killed in an earlier quest who was this dude's second in command. And if you lie, guess what your reward is? Radiant quests. Oh yeah, you get random assassination missions, of which there's already dozens you can pick from random kiosks. Because, you know, we didn't have enough of Radiant quests in Skyrim and Fallout 4. No, we gotta have more unlimited waste of time bullshit. You wanna know a really great example of the lack of player choice to such an insane, nonsensical degree? Once you join the Crimson Fleet Pirates, you can end up screwing over one of the other applicants. This guy who tells you to your face after just knowing you for five minutes that he wants to kill the leader of the gang. And guess what? There's no option to kill him after this because that's what anybody who would actually want to join the pirates would do. Or at the very least, you would turn him in. But more likely, you would kill him immediately. But guess what? He's essential. Okay, fair enough. You complete the quest and and he gets booted out because he's obviously a traitorous, worthless piece of shit. Immediately after this, he confronts you in the bar and he says, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna kill you. Now you would think, okay, maybe now I can kill him, right? Nope, he's still essential. And not only is he essential, if you shoot him, all the other space pirates will start shooting you even though he just got kicked out of the faction. I have very rarely been more angry at this game than that moment, but that was one of the big moments that sealed it for me that this game sucks.
And believe it or not, there's another great example in the very same quest line. The whole setup for you joining the Crimson Fleet is to be a double agent for the United Colonies, right? But of course, if you like the Space Pirates, you can choose to betray the UC, right? But, because they're tagged as essential, you can't just shoot them and kill them. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Well, there's a moment, about two-thirds of the way through the quest line, where you're about to be arrested by the UC for killing some of their people while you're doing a quest for the Crimson Fleet, right? And there's a dialogue option that clearly says, ATTACK. Common sense would dictate that the essential flag would be removed from these characters, you'd be able to kill them, and that would skip a quest in the Space Pirate quest line. At least, that's what a good game would do. Guess what? They're still fucking essential! They all attack you, you can shoot everyone in the room, of course the important characters don't die. You leave, you get on your ship, and then immediately all the UC ships just kill you in two seconds. I actually thought I was soft locked for a minute there, but it turns out that you can fast travel without undocking your ship. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Turns out this time, yes, you can fast travel without actually leaving. So I managed to escape that way, but holy hell, Bethesda did not play test any of this. You can't tell me that nobody tried killing the UC when you wanted to betray them. You can't tell me that nobody playtested the attack them and betray them line and then wasn't able to kill them and then didn't complain about it. I have to imagine anybody working for QA wrote, this makes no sense, fix this, and they just didn't fucking listen. Now before I conclude the side quest section, let's talk about a few of the more minor side quests, because I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, well, I mean, it's a Bethesda game, there's got to be more quests than just the faction ones, right? Yes, there are some minor quests that you can find throughout the city, and guess what? All of them are dog shit fetch quests. Yeah, like all of them that I did, not a single one was interesting in any way. Let's give a few examples. There was one quest in the underside of New Atlantis that had me flip breakers across the map. I'm not fucking joking. I ran around the map, just hit E to flip a bunch of breakers, and that's the quest. Unbelievable, dude. And on a slightly related note, when I was doing the gangster quest line, which was also a disappointment, on Neon, the cyberpunk city, which, by the way, the gang that you join are cartoonishly good guys pretending to be tough who have never broken the law or done anything wrong, really, or at least not that you can see. They're not morally ambiguous in any way, and the evil gang is cartoonishly evil, and they all wear masks so that you don't have to feel bad for them. Truly great writing. During the second gang quest, you have to hack a bunch of signs, which I guess is the equivalent of marking an area with graffiti, but in the future. And it's basically another quest where I just run up to something and it hit E, dude! Oh yeah, and you wanna know what the conclusion of that quest line was? You kill the evil gang, and immediately afterward, the cops show up and hire the other gang as cops, so that there's no more gang violence in the city. That's it! That's all it took to clean up the gangs! Oh, and I've got one more side quest for you, and this one is especially tragic because the concept is actually pretty solid, the execution, not so much. Along your travels, you'll come across a ship in space that was sent off from Earth before the invention of the grav drive, and it has recently, finally reached a planet. The problem is, the planet has already been claimed by people of this time, and so you need to find a way to help out these relatively primitive humans. Now, there are several problems with this quest. The first being that the corpo assholes you come across in the resort of Paradiso cannot be killed. That is not an option. Now, I know you've already heard me talk about essential NPCs several times in this video, but the reason this stands out is because you actually can kill the people aboard the 200-year-old vessel by making their reactor explode. So once you talk to these rich fucks, you're given three options. Obviously blowing up the reactor and killing everyone. You can negotiate and have the people on board the ship work as indentured servants until they pay off their debt to Paradiso. Or as the simple good guy option, you can simply buy them a grav drive and help them install it on their ship so they can find some other planet. 
And so the largest problem with this quest is that there is no satisfying conclusion unless you're playing as an evil character. Not only does buying the grav drive require you to warp to an entire different solar system, yeah, there's no good mechanics on this planet for some reason. No, Paradiso is a tiny little hotel that takes up 0.1% of the planet's fucking surface because Bethesda decided it was a good idea to waste development resources developing like three buildings on this specific planet that is never used again for any other quest. But no, they couldn't put just one more building in this little town that housed a fucking mechanic. No, you gotta sit through multiple more loading screens, then you gotta go back to the ship, do a shitty ass memorization fetch quest slash mini game. And then congratulations, you save the day, they give you some antiques that are worth money and a gun, and then you sail off into the sunset. Now you might notice another problem with this quest based on that very last sentence. Why would they have to work as indentured servants for years if they have countless valuable antiques aboard their ship that are no doubt worth a fortune to some people? 200 year old, probably nearly pristine, relatively anyway, condition relics, those have got to be worth selling to somebody for something. I mean, come on. But really, just the fact you can't fucking kill the corpos when they make them so cartoonishly evil makes me ask several questions, and it makes the noticer in me start going off. You know, it makes me remember such lessons we've been taught in modern games like don't kill your enemies, revenge is bad, etc, etc. No, don't kill your corporate overlords. Instead, pull some magical third solution out your ass that makes everybody happy. Why would I want to make evil people happy? The evil people should be dead. But what's made even worse is that this 200-year-old ship that has managed to survive this journey through humans banding together and being conservative about their resources and likely planning out who can have children, etc., etc., they have allowed a gay couple on board, and not just that, but one of them, a Jewish guy, monologues to you about him preserving Jewish culture because he thought it might be eliminated for some reason. Hmm, hitting it a little on the nose there, Bethesda. And yeah, to no one's surprise, this ship is just as diverse as everywhere else in the future, so it's not like these people really are any different from the people of this present. They're just as quirky, just as tolerant, just as inoffensive. They aren't like fish out of water in any way, so the quest is just not believable, it's not well written, it's unsatisfying to complete unless you're evil. It just sucked across the board. What a waste of a good concept, dude. And there's many, many other repetitive, terrible, woke side quests across this game. It's not worth going into any other examples. Just know that I don't think there was a single minor side quest I liked in the entire game. And somehow I almost forgot this, but the very intro clip that I showed in this video is one of the greatest examples of how they downgraded world interactivity from previous Bethesda games. There are now Half-Life 2 style cutscenes in Starfield. What I mean by that is they're cutscenes where you can still move around your character, but you can't interact with any of the other NPCs that are in the quote unquote cutscene. What this means is, for the first time in Bethesda game history, you can shoot a gun and none of the characters in the room will react because they're in a cutscene. Now again, if you play these games for the immersion, which I imagine many of you do, can you seriously tell me that doesn't just immediately shatter the illusion, immediately take you out of the experience? Because I know the moment that happened, the game suddenly just died a little for me, and it never recovered past that because I knew I wasn't playing a game with player choice. I wasn't playing an immersive experience. I was playing a handcrafted pseudo RPG that was really just a series of linear shootouts and character monologuing in the most safe, inoffensive environment ever. And it might seem like a bit of a stretch to call it that early in the game, but I was right. Because if they don't even let you interact with the characters during a lot of these key moments, then they don't really care about what you, the player, think or do. 
And this only became more and more true over the course of the game. All right, so finally onto the main quest. I'm just gonna briefly cover the story. There's really not that much here, believe it or not. Despite Bethesda wanting you to complete the main story more than ever out of any of their games, it somehow comes across as the most bare bones, at least to me. You'll see what I mean in a second. The intro starts you off working as a miner, and of course your boss is an Asian woman, the first of many female bosses you'll have throughout this game. And you touch a mysterious alien artifact, see a vision, and not too long afterwards some space pirates attack, and you end up going to New Atlantis and join the Constellation Group. And they're basically the star fleet of this universe, except they're just a tiny little fan club, because I guess nobody else cares about space exploration for some reason. And they want to find out what these mysterious alien artifacts mean, what they do, right? And of course, they're a diversity squad, though ironically, they probably have more white people than any other organization in the entire game. They even have a black Russian guy as one of their members, which is just so distracting. Already picked one up from the scans. Matches another one of the artifacts we found. In theory, there might be one temple for each. And so your quest is to go to random planets, find a temple which gives you magic space superpowers, which are just shouts from Skyrim, but even shittier. And to collect these artifacts at the bottom of some big caves where you just shoot generic enemies. Eventually, when you collect enough artifacts, you are attacked by the Starborn. Yes, instead of Dragonborn, it's Starborn. You end up collecting a few more while being attacked by the Hunter. And in classic Bethesda fashion, the Hunter is the most stereotypical mustache twirling bad guy you've ever seen. He literally does cartoon evil laughs as he talks. Surrender be destroyed. Come on, man, who wrote this? How could you think this is acceptable? It's supposed to be immersive. And you have to choose between which NPC you want to die. Either the black scientist guy from the beginning or Russian waifu. Obviously, I wanted Russian waifu to live. And you find out that the Starborn are humans who have visited the center of the universe. And to reach the center of the universe, you have to collect all the artifacts. So, after collecting a certain amount of artifacts, the Starborn contact you and suggest to have a temporary truce between you, the Emissary, and the Hunter. The Emissary turns out to be Barrett, your buddy from Constellation, and the evil one is this random religious leader guy that you met like one mission ago. I'm not even joking. I feel like originally he was supposed to be another member of Constellation, because at least that would kind of make sense for the twist. But no, they made it Keeper Aquilus, which you would have no idea who that even is if they hadn't forced you to meet him just in the very previous mission. And they represent chaos and order, respectively. It doesn't really get any more complex than that. In fact, they don't even really explain their motivations very well. Classic Bethesda. And so you just pick if you want order or chaos. I picked chaos because I hated basically everyone in this entire game. So let's go evil, right? And once you're about 80% through the main story, you have to visit NASA on Earth, where you find out why Earth is a giant sand planet. But to my shock, the Earth was not in fact destroyed by climate change. It was destroyed when NASA scientists were fucking around with one of the artifacts you've been finding, which allowed them to invent the warp drive at the cost of destroying the Earth's magnetic poles. Still doesn't explain how millions of tons of sand were just dumped all over the planet. But I think you and I both know that that was done out of pure laziness so Bethesda didn't have to model some huge post-apocalyptic city which would have actually been awesome and cool to explore and would have actually provided a real memorable experience in this game. No, this game sucks. And eventually you get almost all the artifacts and you have to have this big showdown in this temple where you shoot like a thousand fucking enemies. It is like the worst part of the game by far. Half the enemies are bullet sponges that teleport around and use the stupid superpowers that you have. Though they actually had cool ones, unlike me. 
And eventually you get one of the worst final bosses I've ever experienced in any video game, where the dude just makes a million clones that you have to fight. He has more health than any enemy in the entire game, just a ridiculous bullet sponge. And all the while, you're getting teleported to different maps, which would have been a cool idea, except that it happens so suddenly that it just fucking gives you whiplash. And once you defeat him, you get the final artifacts, you boot up your ship one last time, you go to the center of the universe, and what do you find there? A clone of yourself, who explains somewhat cryptically and mysteriously in a unfittingly effeminate voice that now you can explore any number of infinite universes, which is just another way of saying New Game Plus, which means that pretty much every choice you made up to this point was ultimately useless, but at the very least, you get to see the other conclusion to all those quests that had a binary choice, I guess. And of course, you gotta leave all your friends behind, and not just your friends, you have to leave all of your equipment, all of your ships, and all of your settlements behind, only taking with you your level and skills, and your superpowers. And so you journey into the center, it gives you an ending straight ripped from No Man's Sky, embarrassingly so, and then it awkwardly cuts to credits. Not even fading out the music properly, dude. They shipped this shit as soon as it was playable, I swear to God. So we all agree Todd Howard's a hack, right? And so once you jump into New Game Plus, it skips the introductory quest in the mines, thank God, and gives you a new super special awesome Starborn ship and armor, which is very likely better than anything you got in your first run of the game. Even though the ship only has two weapons, it is far faster and more maneuverable than any ship I had handled before that point. And the main laser gun is good against shields and the hull, and your missile has super homing to the point where it just won't stop chasing a target until it hits. So you don't really need a third gun anyway. And apparently with every New Game Plus run, the story changes in some way. I don't know how many times. I haven't completed New Game Plus yet because I was tired of playing this game. But at the very least, in the first New Game Plus run, you have the option to just tell Constellation that you're a Starborn, how all the artifacts work, and so you get to skip quite a few quests, and they just roll along with it. Most of them just straight up believe you, except for the old rich guy. And yeah, that's it. If you're wondering why all the YouTubers say, dude, you gotta like gun through the main story first. Well, honestly, I have no fucking clue why they said that. I would actually argue you should do the opposite. Do as many side quests as possible before you do New Game Plus because you're gonna lose your progress on literally everything. And look, I'm sure some of you are gonna look on the bright side and say, well, at least the game isn't like Fallout 3 at launch and just ends and you don't get to play anymore after you finish the story. But the problem is that because it's a multiverse, ultimately, none of your choices throughout the game actually mattered. Why is almost every character in the game an essential NPC? What would it harm being able to kill most of these characters if you can still complete the story? How hard would it have been to just have a lot of these characters be killable and then you just fail the quest for that run? What was so wrong with Morrowind's quest design, where the game just tells you, oh, well, you're fucked, load an earlier save, or live in this doomed world, right? And in fact, the Starfield world isn't even doomed. It's much more similar to New Vegas. Who you kill, ultimately, is not going to change whether or not the battle for Hoover Dam happens, or in this game's case, visiting the center of the universe. Why are all the NPCs essential? I need the fucking answer to this question. You don't understand how important that is. In fact, let's just jump right into the conclusion here. Should you buy the game? Of course not. I don't think you should ever touch this game because it is so bland and repetitive. I can't see how anybody would ever possibly have fun with it, yet somehow there's a bunch of people who like this game, which is truly mind blowing. Maybe it's just because the honeymoon period hasn't worn off yet, the hype train is still going, but I have to imagine in the next two weeks there's going to be a shit ton of people disillusioned with Bethesda as they should be, because this game is soulless. It is truly the most lowest common denominator goy slop shit I've ever touched. 
like I said, it's not the worst game I've played this year, but in a way, it kind of is. Like, objectively, it works better than Gollum. It has more fun gameplay than Immortals of Avium, and it's not as ridiculously stupid as Forspoken was. But, in a way, it really has less going for it than any one of those games. Those games were so bad it was good, kind of. I got a certain amount of enjoyment from how bad they are, the same way you would watch a really bad B-movie and laugh at it, right? I can't laugh at this game, it's too painful to play. I think Bethesda has actually forgotten what made people like their games in the first place. To me, the appeal of their games was always the exploration, the creative quest design and unique scenarios, the memorable characters and lore, all the different character species, which used to be a big thing in their games. Now it's only humans, there's no aliens. And all the humans act the same culturally for the most part, it's another fucking melting pot. Space America 300 years from now, or maybe more accurately, Space Brazil. There's truly nothing gritty or offensive about this. I mean, there's no gore, there's no slurs. Elder Scrolls had plenty of racism in it. This is gonna be a weird statement that people are gonna take out of context, but I truly think that discrimination is a massive factor in keeping worlds grounded and interesting because it's something that everybody's gonna face in their life at some point. It's incredibly relatable. I don't care what you look like, you're probably gonna be discriminated against sometime in your life. That's just part of life. But this is supposed to be a bland utopian future. It's truly a dystopia in that sense, the globo homo future, where there's no culture, there's no other languages, there's no other belief systems except the politically correct ones, and white men are nearly non-existent, though that's the quiet part, of course. I don't use the word hate lightly, but I think I do hate this game on a level that is unprecedented. Now, again, I'm not really disappointed because Fallout 4 was soulless garbage, but it was better than this. Fallout 4 had some things going for it. I like the Brotherhood of Steel in that game because I kind of like fascist-esque factions in video games, but you're not allowed to side with the authoritarian team anymore. They're not even allowed to exist. If there even is an evil team, it's going to be just as diverse as the good team because we wouldn't want you to get any bad ideas, guys. I'm serious, this game is like the most soulless corporate product I've ever experienced, and the fact that people are shilling it so hard is deeply depressing to me. I have been vindicated many, many times over for titling a bunch of my videos Gaming is Dying or Blank Company is Dead, and I truly think Bethesda is dead to me after this. I'm sure they'll still exist. There's no way this game will bomb. Even if a shit ton of people refund it, it'll still make some money, I'm sure. But man, it's games like this that make me question if I need a new hobby. At the very least, I should be playing more old good games, but unfortunately, I built this channel around reviewing new games, and that's what people want to see. If I did pivot my channel into reviewing old good games, half of you would stop watching, and it would further death spiral this channel into irrelevancy. Though, it's not like I hate reviewing bad games, I do usually get some kind of weird enjoyment out of it. I mean, I wouldn't have streamed Immortals of Avium for 12 hours and 40 minutes if I didn't get some kind of sick enjoyment out of torturing myself. But Starfield is just one of those games that makes me regret some of my life choices, because the game just sucks. So hopefully you got the message. I pray that none of you bought this game without at least watching one of my streams of it to see how horrible it is. But at the very least, try to get a refund if you already made the mistake of purchasing this. Maybe Steam will make an exception like they did for Cyberpunk if enough people demand one. Starfield is truly creatively bankrupt, and Bethesda's dead. See you next time. Alright. Excuse me, this is a private. <laughs> Those for me, John. <laughs>